Howdy folks, Hunter Lewis, editor of Cooking Light. This is the great Halloween throwdown. We have my recipes and Cooking Light editors here making the very best chili you've ever smelled and tasted. We want to hear from you. I know everybody's making chili this time of year. It's an awesome dish to make for Halloween. Make it ahead, put it out in a crock pot or your Dutch oven and uh, show off your skills. We also know a lot of you guys are doing your own throwdowns with your friends and family. So we're going to talk a lot about chili tips. We've got four very distinct and different kinds of chilies. This is our chili squad. I've got Jamie, Ves uh, Jamie Vespa, nutrition editor of Cooking Light, Tim Sebula, senior food editor of Cooking Light, the famous Darcy Linz, my recipes editor, and um, we've got four different kinds of chili today. So we've got a, a, a very classic Texas style brisket chili here. Jamie's going to be making a, tell us what you're making, Jamie. It's a pumpkin sweet potato black bean chili. Awesome. Tim has got the classic uh, beef and two bean. Awesome. With brown beef. And Darcy, what are you making today? I am making the ultimate white chili. Well, I think all choked up white chili, not chicken <laughs> chili. There's chicken and pork. So we're repping across all kinds of different chili spectrums here. We want to hear from you guys throughout this. We're going to take your comments and your votes, and they're going to go into the, uh, the final voting, the final tally for the taste off. So let us know what you like. Let us know what you're making. Let us know what your chili secrets are, and we're going to get right to it. All right, so Jamie, you are making a vegetarian chili. What's the first step? Yeah, so I'm making the only vegetarian chili today, but I promise it's super flavorful and it's got a nice and meaty texture, even though it doesn't have meat. So we started off with our Dutch oven here. It's over medium heat. We have two teaspoons of olive oil in here. This is one uh, chopped yellow onion. I'm just gonna add this in. And the secret to really maximizing the flavor with uh, the spices in chili is to cook them with the onion. So I'm gonna add those in right now. So I'm gonna start off with two teaspoons of chili powder and two teaspoons of cumin or cumin, however you say it. And then we are going to do two teaspoons of brown sugar. Now since this is a pumpkin chili, the brown sugar just really helps to bring out those nice pumpkin fall flavors. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of chipotle chili powder. So it's got a little bit more of a kick to it. It's gonna help balance out that brown sugar really nicely. And then one of my secret ingredients for all chili is to do half a teaspoon of cinnamon. The cinnamon really brings out a nice robust flavor profile. So I absolutely love that. And not just in pumpkin chilies, really in any chili. It's so nice. It's such a nice addition. It smells great. Why are you adding the spices to the onion and why are you cooking the spices right now? So adding the spices to the onion, again, it just really helps to maximize the flavor of all those spices and the onion. Just get it all in there and caramelize right into those onions. So that's looking beautiful. So next, we're gonna add in some garlic. I have two cloves of minced garlic right here. Just add those puppies in. And you really just wanna cook those till they're aromatic. It really only takes about 30 seconds. Any longer, then you run the risk of them burning. So just like that. Now, <laughs> a lot of spice going on here. <laughs> So next, I have one large sweet potato that I peeled and diced up. Now you can add this in raw to the chili because it'll cook in the chili, but it takes about 30 to 35 minutes. So I actually pre-roasted mine for only 15 minutes at 375. So right now it's just fork tender. So I'm just gonna add those in. And those are gonna simmer. Again, normally when I make this at home, I just add in the sweet potatoes raw, but just for time's sake today, I pre-roasted them just a tad. Have you ever won a competition with this chili? Uh, not till today. So today, <laughs> so today, today's the day for today's this vegetarian <laughs> chili. I, I like your spirit. Okay, today. so what's next? So what's next is now we're gonna deglaze all of this gloriousness. I have um, a pumpkin flavored beer right here. This is Blue Moon. Hunter was knocking on Blue Moon. I like it, it's available in grocery stores, so that's what we're going with today. But you can use any kind of pumpkin beer that you like. Or any other kind of beer you like. <laughs> or any kind of beer that you yeah. like. If you're a beer snob, I am not a beer snob. I'll pretty much drink anything that someone hands to me, so. Hunter, what would you use? <laughs> I would use uh, cold beer. 
Um, okay, so this is gonna stew for a little while. Wait, I'm not done yet. I got a couple more things. Okay. Okay, I gotta add it next. We have a can of black beans. You put beans in your chili? Yes, I do. <laughs> Everybody this knows is... a classic Texas style chili has no beans. You guys... Folks, if you're putting beans in your chili, we want to hear from you. This the, is the a... bean eaters versus the non chili bean eaters. But this the, is gonna. Do beans belong in a proper chili? That's a big question. That's, that might be the question of the this day. This is gonna help really beef up our vegetarian <laughs> chili, though. We need those beans, and they're an excellent source of fiber. I can't wait to see what kind of fiber is in your chili. <laughs> Okay. It's about protein. <laughs> so next we're doing three-fourths of a cup of pumpkin puree, and this is going to add such a nice thickness. I absolutely love adding pumpkin puree to this, and trust me, it does not make it sweet or taste like dessert. It just adds a nice, thick creaminess. And then we're going to add a can of petite diced tomatoes. Just pour that in. And then we're just going to add a cup of vegetable broth. And this is what everything is gonna simmer in. So this is gonna simmer until the end of our cook-off and you guys can see how beautiful and thick and glorious it is. I'm also just gonna add in a pinch of salt and pepper too. I forgot about that. So that's it for mine. And mine really relies on some quality convenience items. So it's super quick and easy to make. So. It smells good. I know I'm giving you hell about the beans, but I bet it's delicious. Okay, uh, Tim Sebule here, Senior Food Editor at Cooking Light. Um, if Tim majored in, uh, in chili in college, uh, he would be a chili classics major because Tim's chili is, is about as classic as it comes. Talk, talk to us about uh, the secrets of your great chili. I'd love to share with you. <laughs> so what I've got here is, is a ground beef and two bean chili. And, you know, to be fair to Texas chili, this is Yankee chili. My Texan wife scoffs at this, refuses to call it chili. She says it's a really great tasting stew you've got there, but she won't <laughs> call it chili. But uh, what it amounts to, I mean, this is a chili a lot of us grew up with, uh, ground beef and, and beans and so forth. And so this is kind of like my mom's chili, except it's not burned. And one key to that is what, to get ahead of things, rather than cooking it on the stove top, I like to cook it in the oven at about 325, that way you don't have to worry about stirring it quite so much. It's not gonna scorch on the bottom and give you that flavor that my mom used to like to call smoky. It's not smoky, there's a difference between smoky and burned. But so, another difference is that I don't use chili powder in this particular one, I use a blend of uh, actual dried chilies to make the paste. I use three different kinds of chilies. I use uh, a uh, guajillo, which is kind of earthy and a little bit um, musty is not a good word for that, but, but people use it. Like musty in a good way, is that possible? Musty in a Definitely. good way, let's go with that. So this is, this is the, the guajillo, this is the pasilla, and it smells like, um, it, smell it, smells like uh, it smells like raisins. It's really, really cool. So you can see already the complexity building up. And these are de arbo chilies. This is where the heat comes from, following the rule of smaller chilies, greater heat. Um, this packs quite a punch, just these two little things. Um, one tip for, for getting these, it's good to get them at Mexican or Latin markets because the turnover is better and you're going to end up with, with fresher chilies. In other words, your chilies should pass the bend test. Um, if, they, if they bend nice and supple and bendy like that, that's good. Um, if they're overdried and they've lost their flavor, they'll crack like that. Not good. You can test them easily enough in, in the store and not go home with stale chilies. And these just essentially rehydrate. I like to rehydrate them in in uh, chicken broth, you, you do that just as you would with dried mushrooms or any, any other dried ingredient, and just kind of steep it for about half an hour. Then it gets pureed along with uh, a little, here's another secret ingredient for you, achiote paste, again at uh, Latin markets. Very cheap, uh, widely available there, or at uh, specialty grocers as well. It's a, it's a, it's a spice paste that's annatto, uh, oregano, garlic, uh, but also some warm spices as well, like cloves and, and, and cinnamon and allspice and it's just incredibly complex and so this with the dried chilies is going to give you great depth of flavor that you just can't get in a regular chili powder. Uh, another difference between this and my mom's version or some other versions is that I go with a chili grind beef here and you'll find it at some markets ready made otherwise you'll have to ask your butcher uh, it's easy enough to just put a different attachment on the grinder but what it amounts to is the grinds are about the width of a pencil rather than the very, very slim grind you find on most ground beef. 
And what this does is it helps the beef retain a little bit of texture as it stews for a long, long time. And it helps keep it moist as well because if you use the, the, the uh, other beef, and this is important with our, with our sirloin, which is much leaner. If you use regular ground beef, it, it can get very, very small, very pebbly, and a little bit dry, even though it's in wet, a uh, wet pot, it's gonna lose its moisture. So those are some tricks for you. You got beans yeah. in there? Oh, I got beans, yeah. What kind of beans I got do beans. you have here, Julie? I got two different kinds of beans, per the name. I got small <laughs> red beans and I got red kidney beans. I like to keep it red, but you know, you could go with whatever. All right, if we've got any Texans out there, uh, we want to hear it from you. We've got a chili to represent all the Texans out there. This is a brisket and chuck chili. It's basically a, a braise and a stew all in one. Uh, the key to this is toasting spices like Jamie did. We've got a lot of cumin in here um, and, and dried chilies and to bring out some of that flavor, to coax out the flavor. The beef stews until it's fall apart tender, um, about fork tender. And then the, the real key to this is the finish. And, um, and this chili finishes with masa harina. This is corn flour. Um, it gives it a really velvety texture and a little bit of a, uh, of a corny sort of tortilla-esque flavor. Um, just a few tablespoons at the end help to sort of cream it out and thicken it up a bit. And so we've added that. And we made this ahead of time um, and we put it in a crock pot because that's what we're going to do for Halloween. Kids go out trick-or-treating, they come back, the neighborhood comes over. It's a great idea for entertaining for Halloween. Um, and so I'm going to finish getting our garnishes for our chili bar ready. I'm going to kick it over to my recipes editor, Darcy Lenz. Darcy, um, while you guys were sleeping, she was researching all the best white chilies in the world and all of those techniques went into her one pot of famous white chili, and I'm telling you guys, this white chili is banging. That's definitely what happened. Um, okay, so I don't have any super fun visual aids to talk about the chili, but I do want to go over a few points on how we build layers for flavor and texture in this chili, okay? And then we will go into making a really nice, versatile, fresh topping for it. Okay, so we start this chili with a broiler by popping one jalapeno pepper and one serrano pepper, fresh, fresh peppers, not dried, um, and one onion under the broiler for about 15 minutes. And what that's gonna do is char those up really nice, and then you seal them up in tin foil so that they can steam for five minutes after you're done broiling, and that way they will continue to cook and you can slip the tough skins right off of those chili peppers. And what I do after that is take the charred peppers and the charred onions and I combine those with our first step of white chili, which is white beans, white cannellini beans. I combine your peppers, the charred onion, and the beans in a blender along with some chicken stock, a little bit of flour, and I think that's about it. So you take that and you make this really wonderful, thick, savory, umami dense puree. And that's gonna be like the start of a creamy, rich, wonderful base for this white chicken chili. And it also contributes to the color, makes a really delicious, like rich um, foundation. Okay, so like Jamie was saying, toasting the spices, pro move the chili. So that's what we do next. We start with our Dutch oven and we put in, I wanna say, cumin, coriander, and dried oregano. You're gonna toast those along with eight cloves of minced fresh, minced fresh garlic. And to that, we add the puree that we made along with some ground pork. That's what I was saying earlier. This is not white chicken chili, it is white chili because we have two types of, well, three proteins, but two animal proteins, pork and chicken. Um, to that, we add about a pound of ground pork and your puree, a little bit more chicken stock, and then you let that simmer and the flavors build and build and build for about 20 minutes. And then to that, you add two pounds of cubed chicken breast, along with some white corn, more white beans. I have two types of beans in my chili too. They're both white, um, cannellini and chickpeas. And then we finish it off, brightening it up with a little bit of lime juice and half and half, which not typical of most chilies, I realize. But the half and half gives it a very like rich creaminess as well as contributes to the color. And that's one of my biggest beefs whenever people say, you know, I brought white chili to this chili situation. And then they un they unlit it and it's more of a, um, I don't know, yellow, brown muddiness. 
And this is like a nice creamy velvety off-white color. And then we also have some chopped fresh cilantro in there. So that's basically building your white chili. Okay, so what I like to top this chili with is a very bright, very easy, fresh little topper. And this is one medium super ripe avocado. And to that, we're gonna add one third of a cup of light sour cream. And I've already sprinkled the avocado with a little bit of salt, as well as just about two teaspoons of lime juice for a little acidity. And all we're gonna do is just mash that together into a nice little avocado cream. And literally, you can just do this by hand right here. It's kind of a hybrid between, I would call it updated or upgraded sour cream as opposed to like a guac situation. And it turns into this really nice pale green, which I think is just a beautiful contrast against your lovely and light white chili. And there you go. You can also throw this in a food processor if you want to get it super duper smooth. Um, I personally like a little bit of texture and chunkiness up in there. But yeah, it almost looks like mint ice cream, but it's not because we're eating chili and that would be weird. <laughs> All right, good go on the uh, toppings bar. All right, so everybody knows that the best uh, way to finish chili is with a variety of, of different options. Uh, there's no one way to top your chili, so we've got about 20 different ways to top chili, including Darcy's awesome avocado mixture. So we've got sour cream, we've got tomatillos, cheddar, radishes, avocados, gotta have lime. Uh, personal favorite of mine, corn two ways, corn nuts and uh, Fritos. We got the queso fresco, a couple different kinds of onions, scallions, red onions, cilantro, and uh, we'll pull out some hot sauce too. So uh, as we are assembling bowls of chili for uh, for the taste test, um, use your smell of vision. We want you voting. What's your favorite chili here? Um, of these four chilies, we're going to link to a bunch of recipes across Cooking Light and My Recipes. Um, we know you guys are making chili this time of year. We want to hear from you and uh, we can open up some questions why people are serving themselves. So, Rebecca, do we have any questions? For folks? We have a couple of people who are uh, arguing against the beans versus beans versus Yeah, how many no beans, beans versus no beans do we have out there? Is, is there a consensus? Jennifer says Texas chili, no beans. What about beans in general in your chili? Uh, with, we had some bean lovers. Yeah, yeah. Same with my we have we have a lot of bean lovers. Well, we've got some bean lovers here. Everybody's got two Obviously. different kinds of beans. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in yours again, Hunter? So this is brisket and chuck and um, dried chilies. It's got beef stock, um, a lot of cumin, and masa harina to finish. So I see that yours is in a slow cooker right here. That's right. Um, and yours is the only one in a slow cooker. Is there a reason beyond the fact that you're making it for Halloween that you, you can make you this can in choose? a slow cooker? The, the uh, reason why we make this in a Dutch oven is because you, you want to brown the meat ahead of time and then you want to cook your aromatics and your onions and your garlic in the, uh, the beef juices. So to really develop the, uh, the flavor, I wouldn't make this in the crock pot, but certainly, uh, you know, when we're out trick or treating, uh, put this thing on low and keep it warm so when you come back it's ready to go. Um, so that's why I love the crock pot for this. Certainly there are, there are chilies you can make in a crock pot, mm -hmm. a dump and stir type version, but when you're browning things ahead of time, um, you can certainly brown them in another pot and put them in, um, but that's not what we're doing here. And then Jamie? You can actually cook this all in the slow cooker for high on two hours or low for five hours without browning anything ahead of time. Awesome. So uh, let's flash on the uh, the titles. We want our audience uh, across to Cooking vote. Light and My Recipes to vote. So you guys vote and we're gonna go ahead and start serving and we're gonna vote too with our scorecards. Pumpkin, one. <laughs> I think the lights should count as votes too. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's over now. Big round of bowl. needs 
like 10 more minutes ish to summer. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I haven't had lunch, so I'm probably just gonna like go for it. Serve up my own portion here. <laughs> I'm happy to serve anyone else's too. I want someone to create a divided bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would, like a chili ideal. smack down bowl? Uh -huh. That would be ideal for sure. Cool. We're not filming anymore, are we? Oh. oh. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're getting a lot of people that it's between the Texas and the classic at this point. Texas and the classic? Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, don't don't British. sleep on the white chili. Okay, what's no, wrong? White chili. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna taste here. We're gonna take all of your comments, and uh, we're gonna let you know in about ten minutes um, on this link. Uh, who wins the great chili smackdown of 2016? The great Halloween chili smackdown. Happy Halloween to you guys. Happy chili season. Come to Cooking Light and My Recipes for all the chili tips, all the secrets, all the classic and not so classic chilies. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.